Hey, how's it going, people? Simon Slava here, and this is your quest guide for Heart of Stone. Straight on release. Happy days. Quest requirements. Carnelian Rising and Rune Memories. Skill-wise, you need 25 runecrafting and 35 magic. There's no item requirements. However, you will want some food and some magic gear, as the boss at the end is basically invulnerable to melee and range. To start the quest, you need to speak to Ariana just outside the Wizard's Tower, south of Drainer. So once you're here, go ahead and speak to her, accept the quest, and run through like two minutes worth of chat. So just hold down space, uh, the answers, you'll have a bunch of conversation bits, doesn't matter what you answer, and it makes absolutely no difference. So choose whatever makes you happy, either way, just spam through it, it's all good. One thing worth mentioning with this quest is everything past this first beginning bit can be a bit random for everybody, it can be in different orders. So I'm going to put a little menu up, hopefully, which will link you to the different sections. And if your section is there, then you can go and head and click on that. That will take you straight to what you need. And hopefully I'll have a menu so you can come back to the selection bit of the video once you're done with it. Hopefully that makes sense. Either way, you'll find it in a minute. Uh, it can be in different order for everybody, hence why I'm going to be doing it this way. But the parts themselves are the same for everybody. So after you finish talking to Ariana and running through her chat nonsense, go towards the east as if you was going underneath the wizard's tower like you did in Rune Memories, and just outside the entrance you'll find her again, go ahead and speak to her. Or Ariane, Ariane, whatever you want to call her. And again, as she likes to chat a lot of nonsense, spam through all of her chat. And finally, once you've finished talking nonsense to it, just say OK, option 1, and then speak to the giant robot Tzablogi Kipple right next to it and say yes. There is a tutorial, uh, you can take it if you want. This part is utterly random, and I'm not sure if everybody else's is the same, and it's complete luck as far as I know, but the first one for me was Law Mind Water. This may very well be different for you, and the way to work it out is there's a little blue ball on the graph on the right, You've got to try and match that with the bar sizes, and that'll give you the location. So my first one is up in Tabley. I will put the menu on the screen now, so if yours is in a different place, go ahead and click to where you need to be. So at this point, we're going over to White Wolf Mountain. That was our location, so home telly to Tabley, and then just run up to White Wolf Mountain just a touch. And I dare say, if like me, you should probably have like a blue square in your minimap. Just run towards the center of that and kipple the Tazar slash robot slash something or other, Room Guardian, I don't know what it is. He'll pop up like that, like some kind of daisy. Go ahead and speak to him and then choose option 2, Tracker. You need to do this little circle thing again and I'm unaware if this is the same answers for everybody. But the general idea is match the little red ball that's bouncing up and down on the graph and make the bars match it pretty much. I've no idea how this works, so my best bet and my only advice I can give you is spam through it until it's right. Eventually, once you've done that, he'll say I've identified the frequency and a portal will pop up just nearby. Go ahead and click on that to enter. So as soon as you enter the portal, there will be the first major puzzle of this quest. It's fairly straightforward and I do have the answers for you. Uh, I don't have them on video as this was on release, so I did make quite a few mistakes, so I don't have a perfect run. However, once my noob gets up the level, I will remake this guide so it's all peachy and lovely. But for now, these are all the answers and I've done it in the easiest possible way I could think of. You want to face your screen so east is up for you and west is down for you. And your camera wants to be in this kind of position. Once it is, these are the answers. So on the right, I've labeled all of the columns for you. So you should be able to work it out fairly simple if you changed your camera, as I said. And all the answers are on the left hand side in this massive column. So the idea is there's four stages to these switches that you need to follow. And you start with the first column on step one. So everything in that vertical line is the first part. So in order to open the first gate, you need to put A, B, C, D, and F all lit, so they're all green, and E needs to be turned off. 
It's as simple as that. That's how you complete the first part. As soon as you do, the golem will then say something to you, something along the lines of, that's the first doorway done, moving on to the next phase. And all the lights will be randomised and more pillars will pop up. At which point you then want to follow the second column, so the step two column, and you want to light them up in the order they are actually shown on screen. So A, B and C are all green, so those all need to be turned on. D needs to be turned off. E, F and G needs to be turned on. H needs to be turned off. And I and J need to be turned on. Once you've done that, the golem will once again say that's another door done, and then randomise all the lights and stuff again. And then you want to follow the answers in step 3 column. This is the easiest possible way I could think of it for you, for the easiest possible way to understand it. It's fairly straightforward. All the let all of the pillars are now lettered on screen, plus all the answers are on screen. Easiest possible way I could think of explaining this to you without making it all confusing. Yeah. So hopefully this works out nicely for you. Uh, you can pause the video for this, no problem at all. And that is pretty much it. Those are the answers. It's fairly straightforward. Just light them up in the order they are on the little column on the left. Either way, once you're done with all four of them, they should now open the doorway to the north and you want to make your way inside and talk to the giant head. So at this point you want to run through every single option this head has for you. I mean literally every single option. So for example, if you choose uh, option one, you run through all of his chat and then you'll be given a few more options, run through every single one of those. So if there's a couple of options in there, then you want to run through option one a few times so you can answer all of them. Basically, you want to run through literally everything these heads say. Like, quite literally everything. So either way, once you've run through every single one of its answers, go ahead and speak to the golem. If you've looked through everything necessary, the golem will offer to track Xenia once more. Just go ahead and say option one, yes. You'll be treated with this again. Uh, same thing again. Try and match the red ball with the bars on the graph. Uh, random chance, spin them around, see what happens. It's a bit like a clue. So yeah. Try to go through it. Uh, yours may or may not be the same as mine, so maybe this is the answer for you at this point. Maybe it isn't. Uh, I'll chuck a menu on screen now to take you back to the selection. So if you have to go over to Cramja or if you have to go over to Intrana or something, it'll be back to the menu for you. So either way, once you've answered the first set, he'll tell you where you need to go. So for me, it's Intrana, and I'll be heading there now. For you, if it isn't in China, go back to the menu and skip to the part you need. So here we are then, we need to go to in China, so first things first, we need to bank all of our stuff as we can't have anything on us. I do recommend bringing along some food with you, as there is some combat in this little section, especially if you're a low level, you will want some food. You'll be given weapons once you're in there, so as long as you have a lot of food on you, you should be perfectly fine. If you're max level, you shouldn't have any problem here with or without food, but if you are a lower level, or just for the sake of caution, I do recommend bringing along some food. So once you're ready and you're set up, so no armor or weapons, and you have a nice chunk of food on you, make your way over to Intrana. So when you're in Trana, Kipple will magically pop up directly in front of you. Go ahead and speak to him and choose option 2, Tracker. You've got to run through this stupid runic modulator thing again. Sorry I can't be much help here as the answers, as far as I know, may be random for everybody. So, yeah, it's random luck again. Run through that until eventually it opens a portal nearby. So 
So once you've opened the portal, it'll be found on the north side of Entrana. So just run through past the church and move you over to the north side of Entrana, just west past this little farming house and you'll find the portal here. Go ahead and enter. So once you're inside you want to speak to Kipple and the basic idea in here is you need to click on this fence to start the combat. Once you do he'll give you some weapons. Now some basic trash enemies will come running at you but occasionally there'll be one with kind of like a timer bar above his head which will slowly fill up. When you see that guy run over towards you, you want to run next to Kipple. And the idea is if you run next to Kipple, Kipple will stop the timer from going down. He'll pick it up and place it next to this gate. Kipple needs to grab three of them to stop the timers and place them next to the gate in order for you to blow it open and speak to the head. So you can kind of ignore these three little trash mobs and you basically need to focus on the one that has got a timer above his swede. And you just need to run straight to Kibble as soon as you see that timer. So it's fairly straightforward, I'll show you now on screen. So you've got your normal trash mobs, they'll keep running at you like so. And eventually you'll see one with a timer like this, you want to run over to Kibble, he'll pick it up, disarm it and then lob it next to this gate. You need to do that three times, so he places three of those little things next to the gate. And then you can just simply left click on them and they'll explode, blowing open the gate, allowing you to talk to the giant head. Happy days. That's pretty much this entire little section. So this may take you a little while, it's fairly straightforward. But as long as you're relatively quick when you see the timer, uh, you should be perfectly fine here to be totally honest. So again, kind of ignore the trash mobs and look for the timer and then run towards Kibble. You'll pick it up and lob it at the gate. And finally, once you've got all three of them at the gate, like so, just go ahead and left click on any of them to blow them up. So as soon as the pathway is clear, go ahead and speak to the giant Swede. And you want to run through every single option here, uh, same with the other heads, literally every single option you need to go through. Uh, some of them are a bit finicky, not entirely sure what the correct answers are, but literally you need to run through everything as far as I know. There's an easy way to check if you have all the necessary information is if you speak to the head and then run ahead and speak to Kimball. If he asks you about the tracker, just say yes. And if the tracker instantly opens up, then it means you've asked all the correct questions and you've answered or asked every single question. If he doesn't open up the little runic modulator, it means you've missed an option somewhere and you need to carry on speaking to the head and running through all of his options. So literally, when it comes to speaking to these heads, you need to run through everything. Even if there's multiple choices underneath like the first set of questions like this. You need to run through everything to make sure. It's annoying, I know, but, well, Jagex, they decided to do it this way. So either way, once you've asked all the questions, go ahead and speak to Kibble once again. And say yes for the tracker. And once the tracker's back up, it's the same deal as before run through. Uh, I do have the answer for this but whether or not it's the same for you is utterly random because everyone's discs are going to be randomized so I've no idea if yours is going to be the same order as mine or completely different. But either way this was the answer for me. So if yours does not take you to the same place as me right now then go ahead and click on one of the annotations on screen now that'll take you back to the menu. So this has taken me to Karamja so if you're if you've got Karamja as well, carry on watching the video. If not, go back to the menu and move on to whatever it did send you. So either way, once you're ready, go ahead and teleport over to Karamja. So at this point in time, this part is fairly straightforward, but you will be taking a lot of damage. You basically need to tank quite a bit of damage throughout this next little section. 
So if you do need the bank, then you can head into the Tazar area and use the bank there, or if you prefer to heliport over to Edgeville, either way. You want to fill out your inventory with full munchies, and you can use any combat style you wish. But the food is the most important part, as this is literally a survival section. You just need to wait and take damage for an extended period of time. So either way, once your inventory is full and you've got your armor and weapons, make your way over to the Karamja Volcano. And once you get nearish to the Tazar entrance, Kibble will suddenly pop up again. Go ahead and speak to him. Choose option 2, Tracker. Play with this runic modulator again. Sorry, don't have the answers for you here. So it's another random chance. But once you've done that, a portal will open literally just to the south of the Tazar entrance. Go ahead and make your way inside. So for this entire section, you pretty much stay in this little area while Kibble speaks to the giant head. And at the top of the screen you see Kibble's debate progress. You basically need to stay alive until that fills up completely. Uh, throughout the time you're here, you'll have monsters randomly pop up like this. Go ahead and kill them if you so choose wish to. Uh, I probably would. It'll save you from taking a lot of damage. At the same time, randomly, flames will just fly up out of the ground, and if you're standing where those flames are, you will start to take fairly hefty amounts of damage. So you need to keep an eye out for that whilst killing all the monsters that randomly spawn. If you are 99 in defense and attack and whatnot, you can survive here with no weapon, armor, or food, but it does get a bit close towards the end, so yeah, would recommend food and armor. Would definitely be useful. Breathe away the entirety of this section is literally stand around and wait for that progress bar to fill up whilst basically trying to avoid taking as much damage as possible. So, finally, once the progress bar is finally full, all the monsters and flames will disappear, and you can now go in and speak to the giant head of doom. So, go ahead and do so. And, very much like the other ones, you've just got to run through literally every single option with these heads. Like, I do mean literally every single option. So, there's multiple choices underneath the first answer, for example. You need to go through them all. So once you've run through all of his answers, go ahead and speak to Kibble. If you've answered all of the questions you need to, then this will pop up straight away for you. If not, then it won't pop up for you and you've missed one of the questions that need to be asked. So go ahead and speak to the head again. So this was the answer for me and this is taking me over to the desert just east of Sophenum. If yours isn't east of Sophenum and it's one of the others, there should be an annotation on screen now allowing you to go back to the main menu as such and you can choose where it did tell you to go. But for now, if you are meant to be going over to Sofnum, go ahead and home teleport over to Al Karad. Now, if you don't have a fear receptor, the way to do it is go through the Shanty Pass and take magic carpets all the way down to Sofnum, and that is your quickest way down there. If, however, you do have a fear receptor, you can go ahead and simply teleport straight to Pyramid Plunder, and you can exit Sovenum from there and access it that way. Either way, whichever one you decide to do, for this section you need 20 empty spaces. So you can re-equip your armor if you had to take them off for the last section, and you can take a little bit of food with you, you don't necessarily need it for this little section, no. You do, however, really do need 20 imagery spaces. So make sure you have at least 20 imagery spaces for this section in Sovenum. So 
So make your way down to Sofanum. Myself, I'm going to be using the Fear Receptor. If you need to use the Magic Carpets, that's fair enough. You can get down to Sofanum that way. If, however, you do have a Fear Receptor, go ahead and teleport to Pyramid Plunder. So once you're here, you want to go out of Sofanum, or if you come by the Magic Carpets, just head a little bit east. And basically you want to head almost directly east from here and then a touch to the south once you pass the end of the wall. And eventually Kibble will pop up in front of you. Once Kibble does pop up for you, just go ahead and speak to him. And go ahead and choose option 2 Tracker. And same thing as before, just go ahead and match these up. It is uh, utterly random what combination you get. I have no idea what the answers are I'm afraid. So it's literally trial and error. Just run through it. Either way, once you've completed it, a portal will appear just to the southeast of the northeast corner of Sofanum. Just run down here and jump at the portal. So once you're inside, you'll have a little bit of a puzzle. It's fairly straightforward and I do have the answers for you, so no worries. Just go ahead and search any shelf and you'll receive 20 random whatever the hell these things are. But these are the things you need to do. You need to use these on each other to create a combined rune or combined observation I should say. So you want to find evolution and imprinting and use them on each other in order to create golem and eye. And that is one of the items you need. It's the same with the others so you need to find predator and then add that with focus in order to create Ariana and the golem. You need to find dispersal and add it to arrival to get Xenia was alone and same deal with correction and transition and lastly, Conflict and Condemnation. So add Evolution and Printing together, then add Predator and Focus together, then add Dispersal and Arrival together, then add Correction and Transition, then finally add con Conflict and Condemnation. Once you do so, you should have five brand new separate items compared to before. So once you've added all of those and you now have five brand new items, you want to head over to the head and go ahead and use each one of those newly created items on the head itself. It doesn't matter what order you use them in, so just go ahead and use the ones you just created on the head and then run through the quick little bit of chat and then add the next one and the next one and the next one until you've used up all five of the ones we just made. Once you've used all five on the head, go ahead and speak to the head once more and you'll be able to run through all the chat. So just like all the other heads, you need to run through every single tiny little option with these heads in order to progress to the next part. So make sure you choose every single option that is possibly available to you whilst you're talking to these. There's an easy way to check to make sure you've asked all the questions is simply speaking to Kibble. If Kibble instantly gives you the option to use the tracker and it does pop up straight away, then you've asked all the questions you need to. If it doesn't, then you need to carry on speaking to the head as you've missed an option or three. So either way, go ahead and speak to Kibble once you're done, choose yes. And if it tells you to go to the next part, then I'll click on the menu, that will take you back to the actual menu itself and you can choose where to go. If this was the last one for you, just as it was for me, then you now need to go down to Lumbridge. So this is the final part of the quest here. 
So go ahead and home port down to Lumbridge. And this is the boss fight section, and it is this part. So you need to have magic gear for this. I highly do not recommend range or melee. The mo the boss really, really is massively defensive against melee and range. You will do very, very little damage. Mage is definitely the way to go. So go ahead and use the bank up in Lumbridge and get out all your gear plus a full invent of food. As you probably will be needing it for this fight. Once you're ready, head into the graveyard just outside Lumbridge and you'll have this little cutscene. Just quickly run through it. So the boss fight is split into two sections. The first section you can't actually deal any damage to the boss. Uh, the second section is where you actually decide to fight him. So the first section you'll be there'll be like these giant massive fireballs will be thrown at you. You just need to try and avoid them to avoid damage. Uh, they don't do a huge amount of damage but it seems to get higher and higher the more you're hit by it. So for the first section the general idea is you've got to run around and Kibble will follow you and in random parts of the battlefield uh, Kibble will stop and say there's some kind of mystical energy here and there'll be a bar above his head that starts charging. Once that bar is fully charged a random thing will just appear, looks like a DNA sequence. As soon as that appears, go ahead and click on it to destroy it. And you need to do that three times throughout the first section of the battle before it moves on to the second half, where you can actually fight. So here we are, I'll show you now exactly what I mean by this. So for the first section, you don't actually fight, you run around with kibble, avoid the fireballs that come flying at you, Run around the room until Kibble starts charging. Destroy the item that shows up. Do that three times in order to move on to the second section. And the second section is literally just lay into the boss until he stops breathing. That pretty much covers the boss fight, to be totally honest. But yeah, here we go. So this is what the boss fight looks like. So you'll be in this room here, and Kibble will follow you around whilst you run around the room. So the boss will lob these giant-ass fireballs at you like so. Simply, you just need to run around the room trying to avoid it, while simultaneously trying to go to every single little inch and corner so Kibble will find one of these special little items. This may take you pretty much no time at all, like you move three squares and you'll start charging, or it could take you a minute or so. Uh, it's literally, it could be on any square in this entire little battlefield, so you're trying to kind of need to run everywhere while simultaneously avoiding these fireballs. So as you can see, he's just stopped moving and he's now charging. You can see the bar above his head in the top right corner of the screen right now. So once he's fully charged, a random little item will appear on the floor. As soon as that item appears, you need to click on it to destroy it. And you need to do this three times throughout the fight. Like so. So that's one down. you now got to run around until you find the next part where he'll start charging up again. It is utterly random and it changes each time you come in here. So if you happen to die, it won't be in the same place as it was before. So you go, he's now charging up for the second time. And once he's fully charged, that little thing will pop out of the floor again. All you need to do is simply click on it in order to destroy it. And you need to do this three times, so that's two out of three. And the same deal again, run around the room avoiding those fireballs whilst trying to get Kibble to find these things. So that is the third one he's just found, so he's charging up now. So all you need to do is simply destroy those three, three times. And that'll conclude the first section of the battle. So once you've destroyed all three, you'll get another little cutscene, and now you can actually fight the boss himself. He is massively resistant to melee and range, and he's fairly resistant to magic, but he does take a lot more damage when you do use magic against him in comparison to range or melee. If I was using range or melee, it'd be doing about 22 damage a hit instead of 300 a hit. So yeah, the difference is pretty massive. So either way, this boss fight is fairly straightforward. There doesn't seem to be any special gimmicks to it. It's literally just kind of like a mano-a-mano -mano match. Just lay into him, lay waste to him, give him a good old headbutt, you know, 
Zip's not gonna lead butt. Maybe a poke. Yeah. Just take him down. So either way, once you've killed him, you'll get treated to another little cutscene to end up this quest. Happy days. And as soon as you're ready, go ahead and speak to Ariana just to finish off this quest. So quickly run through a nonsense for one last time. Happy days. And you'll be receiving one quest point, a K and a half XP lamps for runecrafting and magic, two 500 XP combat lamps, and the ability to receive a Kipple Nano Pet from Ariana, plus your two Treasure Hunter keys, same as usual. Uh, she does give you a lot more information if you're interested in the lore of RuneScape. It tells you about the Elder Gods and all that kind of thing, and all the nonsense going about in the Sixth Age. Um, if you're not, then you can just simply walk out and leave the room, and that is literally how you end that conversation with Ariana. Otherwise, she goes on forever. So either way, people, that is pretty much it. That is the quest guide on release. Uh, I will probably be remaking this once my noob gets up to scratch from the Hardcore Iron Man, but until then, happy days. You'll just have to use this one, you know what I mean? Either way, people, hope you, you find this useful and you've managed to complete the brand new quest. And with that said, I'll catch you all later. Have a good one.